Hi, today we will explain the plot of a movie called Source Code which was released in 2011. So, let's get to the storyline. One day, a military pilot named Coulter Stevens woke up on a train, in front of him was a beautiful woman named Christina. Looking around, Coulter looked confused because everything he saw was very strange to him plus the woman in front of him always called him Sean. After checking his face and the identification he carried, it turned out that at that time Coulter really woke up in the body of a teacher named Sean Fentress. Frantically Coulter tried to explain everything to Christina, but suddenly, the train they were traveling on exploded violently. Now everything seemed dark and Coulter woke up in a capsule, this time in front of him there was a screen that showed the figure of a woman who spoke. After some tests, Coulter remembered the identity of the woman who was talking to him, her name was Goodwin. When knowing Coulter had recognized her, Goodwin looked happy and welcomed his arrival, then she asked about the perpetrator of the train bombing that Coulter had just experienced. Still confused about the situation, Coulter replied that he didn't know. Hearing that Goodwin ordered him to return to the incident, she also explained that Coulter only had eight minutes to find the bomb or the culprit, after which everything went dark again. Shortly after, Coulter woke up again as Sean on the train, he looked surprised and amazed because the previous incident repeated itself, everything also seemed so clear and real. As Sean, Coulter could control the situation when the incident happened again. After remembering his mission, Coulter began to interrogate the people around him, everything went as before, but Coulter still did not find any clues. While remembering something, Coulter went to the toilet and checked the ventilation hole, apparently the bomb was really there. At that time Coulter tried to contact Goodwin to ask for directions but he did not get any answer, then he went out and warned all passengers to turn off their cell phones but it had no effect and the bomb exploded again as before. Upon waking up again in the cabin, Coulter asked for an explanation of the situation he was in. Pressed by him, Goodwin explained that moments ago there had been a bombing on a train heading to Chicago, a teacher named Sean Fentress died in the tragedy, and through a series of experiments Coulter lived as Sean then woke up just before the bomb was detonated. Coulter's statement is urgently needed as the bomber is planning his second attack. Realizing the situation, Coulter said that in the toilet vent he found a bomb with a cell phone as a detonator, hearing that Goodwin conveyed the information to the other crew. Based on that information Goodwin could calculate that the bomber was among the 52 people who were using their cell phones on the train, she would also send Coulter back and ask him to check the passengers one by one until he could find the culprit. Actually, Coulter wanted to say something, but the soul transfer process had already begun. Soon Coulter woke up again as Sean on the train. While talking to Christina, he set the countdown on his watch at exactly 8 minutes, after which he asked Christina for help to jointly identify the passengers one by one. Until one moment, Coulter saw a man who came out of the toilet in a hurry, the man got off when the train stopped at Glenbrook station. Suspecting him, Coulter invited Christina to get off and follow the man from behind. When the man sat down, Coulter approached him and forced him to hand over his cell phone and bag, but as it turned out, Coulter caught the wrong person and the train exploded not far from his location. Meanwhile, Christina shouted to warn Coulter because he was in the middle of the train tracks. Unable to dodge this time, Coulter died after being run over by the train behind him. As before, Coulter woke up in a capsule, but this time Goodwin did not appear. Apparently there had been a system error from Goodwin's control room. After trying to fix the screen, Coulter connected with Dr. Rutledge, a researcher who conducted the experiment on him. Seeing Goodwin coming, Coulter reported that he had not found the culprit but he managed to save someone, namely Christina. Hearing that Dr. Rutledge explained that what Coulter did in the source code was just an illusion and not real, he further explained that source code is an experiment by uniting a person with the remnants of brain waves containing other people's temporary memories, the temporary memory only lasts approximately 8 minutes. In this case, Coulter entered the temporary memory of Sean who died after the train was blown up. Source code is not time travel so whatever Coulter does there has no impact in the real world. As if changing the subject, Goodwin conveyed a message that the next bombing target was the city of Chicago. Millions of lives of Chicago residents are at stake, but they don't have much time left so Coulter must immediately return to the source code to find the bomber as soon as possible. Moments later, Coulter started all over again as Sean. As directed by Goodwin before, he wanted to take a gun in the train control room, but because the door was locked, Coulter was forced to break it and enter to take the gun. Unfortunately, the officers realized this, Coulter was arrested and handcuffed to a pole. Because he could not do anything, he only talked to Christina until the train exploded again. On the next source code trip, 
Coulter focused on finding information. At that time it was revealed that Coulter had actually died while on a mission in Afghanistan. The information was completely valid because Christina had clarified it herself. After that, Coulter began to remember that he did have an accident while flying his plane. Moments later, he returned to his capsule to ask Goodwin for an explanation about his death and why he could live in the source code. Because everything has been revealed, Goodwin also explained about what really happened to Coulter at this time. After his body was destroyed in a plane crash, part of Coulter's brain is still functioning which is what is currently connected to the source code, meaning that everything Coulter sees in there is basically just an illusion. Because there was no more time, Dr. Rutledge began to speak in a slightly pushy tone. The man said that he was only there to carry out the mission and serve the country for the last time. All the things he experienced in the source code were completely controlled by Coulter himself and did not change anything in the real world, he just had to return continuously until the mission was completed. Feeling treated inhumanely, Coulter felt upset and cursed Dr. Rutledge who had treated him like that, both began to show their respective arrogance. In order for Coulter to be willing to continue the mission, Dr. Rutledge promised that after the mission was completed, he would end everything and let Coulter die in peace, but before Coulter could respond, he was sent back to the source code. Even though he had entered the source code many times, Coulter could not find the perpetrator of the train bombing, he began to look frustrated and gave up on the situation. To raise his spirits again, Goodwin and Dr. Rutledge played a recording of Coulter's father's voice doing an interview. After hearing his father's words, Coulter began to get excited again and asked to be sent to the source code. This time Coulter moved quickly, from taking a gun in the train control room to pulling out the detonator cell phone from the bomb, then he called the contact on the cell phone and found someone suspicious. A man named Derek Frost deliberately left his wallet containing his identity card on the train, he also seemed to check his cell phone several times. Seeing that, Coulter was very sure that Derek was the perpetrator of the bombing. Because the train was suddenly running, Coulter had to jump from there to chase Derek. Although his body was full of wounds, Coulter could still find Derek who was in a white van, by pointing his gun Coulter told Derek to open the van. It turned out to be true, inside the car there were a lot of homemade bombs that he would use in the bombing plan in the middle of Chicago, but when Coulter was caught off guard, Derek managed to shoot him with a gun he took from his pocket. It turned out that Christina was around to look for Coulter, seeing that Derek also shot Christina to death. You must stop my timing. After that, he left Coulter and Christina lying there. When he returned to the capsule, Coulter reported that he had found the culprit, he shared all the information about Derek, from his identity, vehicle license plate, to the contents of the van he was carrying. Hearing all that, Goodwin and Dr. Rutledge looked happy because the information they got was really very detailed, after which Dr. Rutledge congratulated Coulter and officially declared that he was relieved of duty. However, Coulter made another request in which he wanted to be sent back to the source code to save all the train passengers. Hearing that, Dr. Rutledge could not fulfill it. Long story short, Thanks to the information provided by Coulter, Derek was finally caught before he could launch his action in the middle of the city, with this the source code mission was considered a success with extraordinary results, Dr. Rutledge was very proud of his achievement and the entire crew on the mission would celebrate their victory together. Unlike the rest of the crew who were happy, Goodwin actually returned to accompany Coulter because she felt sorry for him, the two discussed many things, until one time Coulter asked Goodwin for help to send him back to source code and remove his life support. After thinking for a moment, Goodwin finally agreed to the request, shortly thereafter Coulter returned to the source code, this time he really made good use of his time, he unplugged all the train bomb detonators and stole handcuffs from a train officer, after which he quickly caught Derek and handcuffed him to a train pole. Using the detonator's cell phone, Coulter contacted the police and reported Derek's crime. Meanwhile in the real world, Goodwin received orders from Dr. Rutledge to reset Coulter's memory so that the source code mission could be carried out again. Hearing that, Goodwin did not agree because they had promised to let Coulter rest in peace. Therefore, she planned to remove Coulter's life support secretly. At the same time in the source code, Coulter took the time to contact his father, he claiming to be a friend of Coulter to convey his son's last-minute apologies. Finished with his father, this time Coulter paid a comedian who was on the train to perform, the show was greeted with laughter from all the train passengers. Shortly before the source code ends, Coulter declares his love for Christina. As the two kissed, the source code ended and Coulter's life support was removed at the same time. But unexpectedly in the source code,
time continues to run and Coulter can live with the surviving train passengers, he left with Christina and decided to continue to live happily in the source code. The next day, Goodwin received an email from Coulter that a train bombing tragedy could be prevented with source code that was even still in development at that time. Seeing the email Goodwin was amazed because it turned out that the source code not only created 8 minutes of past events but it could also create a new world. At the end of his email, Coulter requested that he and that world be immediately assigned to the source code mission.